Hi there, it's Sam from Poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me in Spring Watch. Spring Watch is my two week back to back dedication to all of the beautiful new products that have come out in our spring catalogue and in the celebration catalogue. And also, this is running in conjunction with the online class that I've got on my blog. You can find details of that on my blog. So, this project, okay, it looks just like a gift, a gift tag, but it's not. It's I've got a special kind of a window going on in here and this lovely softened effect. And I wanted to show you how to make it because I wanted to get this sort of 3D effect. Um, I don't really know what kind of effect it is it's, uh, or what the technical term is for it, but I wanted to show you how to make it. Now this one I haven't backed, but I'm going to show you how to make one that is backed. So all you need are kind of scraps of paper and card. You need a piece of card that is two inches um, wide, five centimetres wide, no more than that because we're going to use the scallop tag topper. And then as long as you want, now I've chosen 8 inches because I wanted to make a 4 inch tag, and then you just need scraps of paper, and this is the sweet sorbet paper from the Celebration catalogue, and it, well, you can see where I've been working with it previously, it's just snippets, so I'm going to get the tag topper, because I forgot to get that out, pop that to one side. So, in order to get your tag to fit in in this way, you need it to be no more than two inches, no more than five centimetres. You can use paper that's wider because you can slip it through over the top of these, but to get this very soft finish here without having to use a trimmer or get paper snips or anything like that, keep it to two inches. So, the piece of cardstock, no matter how long it is, fold it in half. That's the first thing you do. Quite simple. Fold it in half, push it down, burnish it. And obviously you make the tag for as long as, you know, make the length of it as, as long as you like or as short as you like. Slide it in, slide it all the way in and you will feel that it is at the end. But if you want to check, just turn it over and you can see. Punch, swap over, the other end, punch. And that's that bit done. Right. I need my petite petals punch, which I left on my, my desk. That's this lovely five-pointed flower. It's got a matching stamp set, but I'm just using the punch. And now I'm lining it in. I kind of, I'm, I'm pushing it almost as far as it will go. It won't go off the edge, so I know that I can have my flower offset. Oops. I'm trying to lock it. Oops. So that's it, so it's slightly across to one side. Don't need that bit, you could use that bit, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to punch three of these while I have this in my hand, and then I'm going to chop oh, that's about right. Does that fit? Yeah, that's about right. So that's all kind of all you need to do. Right. You, this is where the edges of your dimensionals really, really help. Because obviously they're hexagons, you get edge pieces. Having these, it's not essential, but it does help. Because what you need to do is, to get the 3D effect, you need to have your dimensionals going all the way around the flower to get it to lift up and lift away from the backing and I think I'll use a regular dimensional there and a regular one there and then your piece of cardstock uh, paper rather that your pattern paper that you want to have showing through get a snail on the back of that just position it on there and just double check that you can see it peeping through there you go it's just peeping and then snail on this part but not on the, the pattern because obviously that's going to come through so let's get tight on that edge so there we go peel off the backing of these and then when you fold it over if you make sure to line up the top you can then push down squeeze down your edges And that has left this sort of shadow effect, but it's sealed all the way round. And that's where the dimensionals have helped and come into play. So, I did round the corners of this. Shall I do that? Yeah, I think I'll round the corners, round the edges of that one. I'm going to round the edges of this one. So, just with my corner rounder, 
pop it in. And I've got my pool party ink because it's pool party cardstock, which is the colour in the background. And I find that if I start off in the corner that I want to be darkest, and I'm going, I'm not just doing the edges, I'm going quite high up into the cardstock. Hopefully you can see that in the lighting. So I want plenty at the bottom, and then I want it to fade up the sides. So that you can see the angle of my sponge. I've started off like this at the bottom, and I'm, by the time I get to the top, I'm at this angle. So it's just tipping, tinting the edges. There we go. So that's, oh, I think I want to, shall I have a bit more down there? You can never go too wrong with sponging and inking. There we go. These three little flowers, little cuties, grab your paper piercer or rather your piercing mat or something spongy. That's what you want to do. Take the back of your paper piercer and push it into the middle and it will pop these lovely flowers up. And you can get quite a lot of height on those. Oops, they don't fall off your hand while you're tipping your head to look at the monitor. That's quite a lot of lift. Oh, I just stuck my thumb on the end of that. That wasn't clever. Right, mini glue dots on the back of them. And just position them where you fancy. And mini glue dots are remarkably strong. They're not gonna hold a box together. I use mini glue dots in videos because it is speedy for me, but they aren't going to hold a box together but this has been I made this a, quite a few weeks ago and it has rocketed around my office it's been on and off shelves it's moved from two film piles to filmed to refilm because you talked about the wrong product in it to all sorts of different piles so and it, there's been no issue so right sorry I'm bringing in candy dots now black ones just to match the the black uh, centers of these flowers that are in the paper and you can see I'm squishing these down a bit, but I will pop them back up because you just get your paper piercer and you lift them back up again. So cute. And our paper is strong enough that you can, you can, you know, you can show it who's boss. Right. <laughs> to finish, I've got some white taffeta ribbon. Just going to feed that through. And then I did. I used the black one eighth of an inch uh, ribbon on that one. I'm just going to use our silver because um, I have it here to hand. And just tie that round and tie off in a knot or a bow. Do not tie your fingers into it, which is exactly what I'm doing. And I find a double knot works well to stop um, stop it all popping open again. And there we go. That's kind of cute. I didn't think I would do a video showing how to make a tag with the tag topper because you know that would be obvious. But I really liked the effect of this when I'd finished making it, so I wanted to share it. Anyway. Thank you very much for joining me and I hope to speak to you soon. Bye.